And Tutu version 10 has been available on Android devices for a few months and has now finally made its way onto iOS devices. So today we'll be putting the best iPhone up against four of the best Android smartphones in Antutu's latest benchmark, as well as three other heavy hitting benchmarks where we'll test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score, and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. And while all of their chipsets are run on TSMC's four nanometer process, the three phones on the left are stacked slightly different since they pack in Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. The OnePlus is running the regular 8 Gen 2 chip, while the Red Magic and Samsung are both running overclocked versions. However, the iPhone still has the highest main core clock speed, while the Vivo has the lowest. All four Android devices are kitted with LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, while the iPhone is using LPDDR5 RAM and NVMe storage. All of them have 120Hz displays, but only the Samsung OnePlus and iPhone use LTPO technology. I have set all their resolutions to Full HD Plus to match that of the Red Magic. However, the iPhone sits somewhere between QHD and Full HD, and all of them have been set to their respective high performance mode, with the Red Magic taking things even further, thanks to its built-in cooling fan. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu, Geekbench 5, Geekbench 6, and 3 d Mark. and between each benchmark we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Which device will come out swinging, which will be the most consistent, which will be the most efficient, and which will keep temperature the lowest. This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things underway, we're gonna be checking their battery percentages at the start of the test. We'll compare this at the end of the test. And we'll also be testing out their temperatures using an emissivity level of this thermometer gun of 0.5, since that's the most accurate for electronic devices. We're sitting at around 18.4 degrees Celsius in terms of room temperature. And we have just checked the device temperatures at the start. They haven't really been running for all that long, so it's not really worth checking them out. But in case you are interested, the Samsung and the iPhone sitting idle are the coolest and the one that's the hottest with an integrated cooling fan within it, the Red Magic 8S Pro was actually sitting at the hottest at the start when just sitting on idle for a couple of hours. We're running through Antutu version 10 now. Now, in my last benchmark test video, I didn't have an iPhone in there because Antutu version 10 wasn't yet released for iOS devices, but it has been released now, which is great. So I'm really interested to see what the score is gonna be. And just to let you guys know, since I'm sure the biggest question you have while running through Antutu here between Android devices and iOS devices is that you can't compare them. Well, yes and no, you can't compare the GPU portion because they run on different APIs iPhones run on Metal API, while the Androids run on Vulkan and OpenCL and OpenGL API. But the rest of the things within this benchmark, that being CPU, memory, and user experience, you can compare. But at the end of the day, we still want to compare because numbers and numbers and numbers don't lie. And if you are a tech enthusiast such as myself, you still want to compare the best Android devices with the best iOS devices out there. And for now, that is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which will most likely soon be replaced by the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So stay tuned for videos on that one. At the bottom of the screen, I'm not sure if you can see there, but we do have the temperatures in degrees Celsius at the start. And then I'll be updating this after Antutu, Geekbench 5, Geekbench 6, and 3D Mark Wildlife. And just to let you guys know that the phones will have a higher milliamp hour per minute drain rating in terms of battery throughout the test, because the test is now around 10 minutes longer since Antutu version 10 is about five minutes longer than version nine. And we've also added an extra benchmark, that being four benchmarks instead of three, due to Geekbench version six, which takes about five minutes to run through. So we are sitting within Antutu right now, and a couple things have changed. They've changed optimized support for multi-core parallel processing within CPU. They've changed GPU based on Unreal Engine 4 now, which has two new 3D tests scenes that being Seasons, which is a high stress test and Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs. They have scrapped Swordsman, Refinery and Terracotta Soldiers. And they have also changed up memory in terms of ROM and RAM. And in terms of user experience, they've added PDF document processing capabilities. They've added processing capabilities of large pixel images above 2K resolution. They've also added decoding of H.265, encoding of H.264 videos to more comprehensively evaluate the device's video processing ability 
ability. And they've also added video editing, which is awesome since there are actually a few people out there, believe it or not, who tend to enjoy editing on their phones. I'm not one of those guys. But wrapping up Antutu version 10 over here, it's clear to see that the iPhone kind of finishes the test off first, as you can see there. So we decided to test out the temperature as soon as it finished, so it doesn't have enough time to cool down. And then testing the Android device's temperatures out, as they end, we have the Samsung sitting at the lowest temperature with the Vivo sitting at the highest, but the Vivo added the most in terms of temperature gain and the Red Magic added the least. So I've left Geekbench version five in this benchmark video since it actually tests things out slightly different in terms of multi-core when compared to Geekbench version six. Version five focuses on multi-core tested by multiple individual tasks, whereas version six focuses on one workload used and all cores work together on that shared objective. Now in terms of temperature off the Geekbench version five, we have the Samsung still with the lowest peak, but it actually added the most over here. The iPhone added the least since it dropped in terms of degrees Celsius, which means there's probably a little bit of throttling going on there. And moving on to Geekbench version six now, you can't exactly compare Geekbench version five scores to Geekbench version six. And the interesting thing about Geekbench version six is the fact that scores are higher because of more modern tasks used. So the software of the benchmark is kind of communicating better with the hardware of the device. And in terms of temperature, the Samsung once again was the lowest, but this time the Vivo dropped in temperature. So it had the least added gain of degrees Celsius dropping by three degrees Celsius. Once again, probably thermal throttling going on here while the iPhone actually added the most temperature gain this time around. And the last benchmark we have here is 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. Now they're all running Wildlife Extreme, not Wildlife Extreme Unlimited, which is off screen. This is on screen on all of them. And the only difference between Wildlife and Wildlife Extreme is that Extreme renders at a 4K resolution, whereas the regular version version just wildlife that is runs at a 2k resolution which all of these phones can get max scores on and reach a cap of 60 fps so it's better to compare wildlife extreme so that we can get a bigger difference and distinguish which one is more capable of running high demanding games which this benchmark is all about so it's visually stunning and it only takes a minute to run through so if you haven't tested it on your device i do suggest you give it a try now we're wrapping off 3d mark wildlife extreme over here the iphone took quite a while to kick start off there so it finished a couple seconds after the android devices and wrapping up the last benchmark over here. The Samsung was once again the coolest in terms of end temp, but the one that added the least in terms of temperature gain here was the Red Magic and the worst was no doubt the Vivo. Now in terms of start to end temperature, the Red Magic may have started off the hottest and didn't end off the coolest, but it actually added the least in terms of degrees Celsius, only adding 18 degrees Celsius. The Samsung ended off the coolest while the Vivo ended off the hottest and had the highest temperature gain. But just as the Red Magic does great in terms of temperature, it falls short in terms of battery. And that's most likely because it's literally running an active cooling fan within it. And it lacks LTPO technology, which is why it got a milliamp hour per minute drain of 22. The Vivo wasn't far off it also because it lacks an LTPO panel. While the rest did quite well, I'm actually quite surprised to see the Samsung and OnePlus take the lead here. Now the release notes of Antutu version 10 state that we will get higher scores because of communication between the software and the hardware of that specific device. So it's no surprise to see the Red Magic 8S Pro perform phenomenally well here, getting first place with a massive score of over 1.6 million and dead last the iPhone. But I must add, the iPhone is really not far off the rest of these devices. And that is because its user experience is almost double. When it comes to Geekbench 5 single core scores, the Samsung came second, only second to that of the iPhone, which is quite a bit higher than it. The Red Magic is not too far off, literally 11 points off the Samsung, but dropping down to fourth is a slightly bigger drop that being the OnePlus 11, and a massive drop down is dead last the Vivo X90 Pro. Oddly enough, when it comes to multi-core score within Geekbench version five, the Samsung is now fourth as opposed to second place we saw within single core. The iPhone is still placed first here with a massive score compared to the rest, but I must say the Red Magic 8S Pro was very, very close to the iPhone. The first time I've actually ever seen an Android get so close to an iPhone in Geekbench. Third place, we have the OnePlus, and fifth place just below the Samsung is the Vivo. When it 
it comes to Geekbench version six, it's no surprise to see the iPhone once again take the lead over here. But again, I was very impressed with the Red Magic and the Samsung wasn't too far off it with fourth and fifth place once again going to the OnePlus and Vivo. And when it comes to multi-core score within Geekbench version six, once again, first place the iPhone, second place the Red Magic and third place the Samsung. But this time the Samsung trails the Red Magic by quite a large margin. And again, fourth place the OnePlus and fifth place the Vivo. Now, when it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, this is testing out just GPU performance. I was actually not too surprised to see the Red Magic 8S Pro come out on top here, which is quite a lot higher than that of the iPhone, which used to be the champion of this test, but is now dead lost. Interesting to see the Vivo actually come out on top of the OnePlus over here. Now, when it comes to minimum and maximum FPS, the Red Magic has everything beat here with a min of 18 and a max of 29. So overall, the iPhone still performed phenomenally well in terms of CPU, single and multi-core score performance here in terms of Geekbench version five and Geekbench version six, but the Red Magic wasn't too far off that and not far behind that was the Samsung. The only things that the Red Magic placed first in, in addition to that of the iPhone was Antutu and 3D Mark Wildlife, which means that its GPU performance is insane. And I'm super excited to see what happens with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the new chipset within the latest iPhone coming up, probably the A17 Bionic chipset within the iPhone 15 Pro Max Ultra, whatever they're gonna call it. I'm super stoked to test that one out as well as all of these guys' successes. So stay tuned for that video. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.